Hey guys, so some of you might know that I used to be really into ancient Egyptian mythology and I made a video a while back showing you my shelf of ancient Egyptian figurines and so on. Um, I'm not a spiritual person, I don't believe in anything, but I did set it up kind of like a shrine, so it's, yeah, kind of cute. Um, but most of those things on that uh, come from this one shop that my grandma used to take me to a lot and it's run by a guy who, he's from Egypt and he imports things from Egypt and just like his whole shop specialized mostly in ancient Egyptian stuff. Um, um, a few Coptic things as well. Uh, but yeah, and so like I just didn't go for ages, but I found out recently that he was closing down. So I went in on his final day to catch up. Um, you know, he sort of remembered me even though I was wearing my little cat ears and my cat mask and I looked like a nutcase. Um, but yeah, so I went back, had a chat to him and also did some final bargain hunting and that would be all this. So I thought I'd show you what I got and we can talk about some other things because there's one statue in particular that I'm super excited about because I had given up on ever being able to find it. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that. Um, he, I did manage to grab his business card um, just as he's closing. Uh, probably not really worth anything anymore, but... Um, because, yeah, they're not moving anywhere. The shop is closing down because the building is being redeveloped. And I think he said he's just putting everything in storage for the moment. Um, they do have a Facebook page and a website. They might sell stuff online. But he said he's going to focus more on going on tours to Egypt. So, yeah, kind of sad. But I'm really glad that I got to have one last go. You know, looking around, taking a few photos, having a chat and buying some final things. Um, so let's start off with the small stuff and then we'll get to the box and yeah. Okay, so let's start with the smallest things. Um, this I actually bought last along with this. <laughs> I was umming and ahhing for quite a while, but he did me a really good deal on everything, but then an extra deal to convince me to buy these. So yeah, I probably spent a bit more money than I should, but like, you know, it's the final day. It's my last chance to get in and I hadn't been for a long time. I'd saved up a little bit. So yeah, anyway, so let's have a look at what's in here. He gave me this cute little pouch. Oh my gosh. Okay, so as you can see, it's a scarab pendant. Um, I think it might actually be silver. Um, it matches a, like this, this sort of cutting style. I think he called it diamond cut. I don't really know anything about jewelry, but, um, it matches that sort of style of, um, a little eye of Horus I bought from him like a long time ago, or maybe my grandma got it for me. Um, and so when I saw the scarab and within that same style, it just had that sentimental value for me. And, um, yeah, I'd been looking for a scarab. Um, but actually, I didn't plan on getting the jewelry. It's just that another lady was in there and she she was looking at scarabs because she's sort of superstitious and she was looking for like good luck stuff for her kids or something. And so she had this and a little another little silver one. And then there were a few like a, a red and a blue one that she was looking at getting. And I saw it and I'm just like, oh, my God, it's I really like it. Um, So, yeah, I ended up. He did me a good deal and I ended up getting it. Uh, yeah, like if you're into the superstitious stuff, I mean, I guess they're to do with good luck. They're also like a sort of a life thing because the scarab, I mean, it's the dung beetle. So it's rolling around the sun in the sky is what they say. But yeah, let's not talk too much about the dung part of the dung beetle. Um, but yeah, so they're a really important symbol in ancient Egypt. Uh, I was never hugely attached to them, but because of the design, I was like, oh, cute. And like, you know, he's actually standing up and all that, and then on the back, sorry about my dog barking, he's been really needy lately, I had to lock him out of the space so I could film this. Um, but yeah, so on the back you can see there's also this symbol, which is also another scarab symbol, and it's just like, you know, the detail on it is really cool, and so yeah, that's the first thing that I got, I'll put it back in the pouch. Okay, so next up, this is actually a bit of papyrus with some art on it. And I actually wasn't going to get it, except that I saw that lady, you know, she was looking for one of the Eye of Horus as some kind of like evil eye protection. I don't know. Um, I don't really know what that's about. Uh, but yeah, so she was looking for some stuff and he was trying to help her find one because it was like a, a framed one on the wall, but it was a bit pricey and a bit small and she wanted something a bit different, um, unframed. And so we were going through all the papyri, papyri? I'm not really how, sure how to say it. Um, and looking for things and also potentially whether she wanted something different apart from the eye. Um, and yeah, it was kind of fun because like I was helping him tell her what each one means because she actually didn't know anything about ancient Egyptian mythology. So yeah, um, I was helping him explain like what all the different things are. And anyway, so the one I ended up getting, so this is like actually done on papyrus and I'll just see if it's up the right way. Woo, I can't even see on the camera. So it's in the plastic. I'm not going to take it out of plastic. 
Um, I'll probably go and get it framed at some point. But yeah, so this is from, like, you know, it's a scene from the Book of the Dead. It's um, the weighing of the heart. And so we've got um, Anubis there and we've got Thoth, Tote. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Um, you know, the god of wisdom and he's also a moon god. And then you've got Amit. <laughs> For those of you who've watched Moon Knight, that's what Amit is supposed to look like. Um, and just sort of sits there like a puppy waiting to be fed you know, the hearts that didn't weigh properly. Uh, yeah, and you've got, oh, it looks like the bar, like that's one of the parts of your soul. There's a few different parts of the soul. We've got the judges, I think that's what they are. Um, and then I think those are the people, I don't know if they're both getting their hearts weighed or what. Um, but yeah, so I had considered getting a smaller one that just had the weighing of the heart with Anubis and Thoth, to Toad. Uh, I always pronounce it Thoth in my head, but apparently Toad, if you watch um, Crash Course Mythology. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so it had those two plus Ra and the person having their heart weighed and none of this extra stuff. But this one, like, you know, he, he did me a good deal, like I said, and it's got, like, better shading and it's not as flat as the one other one and it's quite big and I just... I worried a little bit because I, I'm not good at getting things framed and I'm not good at, like... Yeah, I've had a few different things curled up for a while that I need to sort out and so I wasn't going to get this because I thought the bigger it is, the more likely it is for me to damage it, but then he got me the little plastic thing, rolled it up nice. And um, yeah, so that is on the papyrus, I don't know if you can see on the back. Um, yeah, fun, some art kind of stuff. All right, I'll just set these things aside and we'll get to the box. So if you saw my shelf video, you'll know I actually have kept all the boxes that all the things ever came in. And um, it's because I like the design of the boxes that he used to use. You can see, you know, there's some fun stuff going on there, fun pictures. And if you saw my shelf video, um, I don't know if I showed so much of the boxes, but they're there and all that. And then we've got the Egyptian collection. Um, so yeah, me getting excited about boxes, but if I'm kind of a cat, then that makes sense, right? Okay, so let's open this up and we'll see what we've got inside. Okay, first one, he sort of wrapped everything up nice for me. Um, brown paper and then you've got some plastic. All right, so it's a little pyramid. Hey, because, you know, like I had all the main gods that I wanted. So before I found the statue that I'm super excited about, I was just like, well, you know, I've got a nice spread of gods. Like there's mainly Anubis. I've got two forms of Anubis. Um, and then I've got Sekhmet. And then I've got a little, the, the bird form of Ra, uh, no, Horus. The bird form of Horus. I've got the Sphinx. Um, I've got Mart. And I've got uh, a little bird form of Toth. Th 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 Thoth? Tote? I seriously don't know how to pronounce it. It's so like, it's like a nice spread and they sort of sit, like, you know, the way that they've set them out is all kind of cool. And I thought, well, I probably don't need any more gods, especially because I'm not emotionally attached to the mythology these days. Um, so in my head, I thought, okay, I'm going to go visit. And if I buy something, I'll go for things that aren't really gods and are more just symbols. So I thought I'll get a pyramid as one of them. And um, gosh, he had a lot of choice. A lot of them were in sets of three. And I asked him, can I just buy one instead of the full set of three? And he's like, yep, sure. Um, although this one seemed to be standalone anyway. There was a little version and a big version. This is the big version that I got. And um, you can see, instead of just being like a regular pyramid, which some of them were, this has like little cute little designs. So that's a scarab in a sort of stylized way. Um, we've got... Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of big cat that is, but you've got some more symbols there. I'm not really sure what those are. Looks like two goats, maybe, <laughs> and I don't know what they symbolize. So if anyone knows, that'd be really helpful. Um, but yeah, kind of just artistic. And then we've got one of the falcons, so could be Horus or Ra. I think they're both falcons. There's a few There's a few that overlap in ancient Egyptian mythology, especially it was like a 3,000 years <laughs> of stuff and like different different cities had different pantheons and um, it sort of morphed over time. So yeah, um, it's a bit inconsistent in that sense. And so it's just like that. And it's it's quite weighty. So I guess I could use it as a paperweight. Not that I really use paperweights. Um, I'm not really sure where I'm going to put all these, by the way. But so yeah, that's my new little pyramid. And yeah, I like the, the artsiness. Um, and then there's like a little crack on that one. So it looks a bit older than it probably is. Cause you know, this, these would be made by people trying to mimic um, the ancient Egyptian style. They're not like real ancient Egyptian stuff. 
So yeah, it's fun when you get little things that make it look older than it is, and I like the sort of black and white and all that. Okay, cool, so pyramid. All right, next up, so this is another thing going along that symbolism, um, you know, objects rather than gods. And oh my gosh, there's some sticky tape, we've got some bubble wrap, I love bubble wrap. And we have an obelisk, because I didn't have one of these, and I really like that it's got the goldy kind of look, and then all these tiny little symbols. Um, the symbols, they're done a little bit messy, but, you know, I just love that there's so much detail in there, and you can tell that someone has done that by hand, like, you know, it's not like some kind of machine-based stamp or however else you might do it. And so... Yeah, a bit hard to show on a horizontal camera all the different things. But yeah, nice and shiny and lots of detail. And I don't know how many sides I've shown you now. Um, yeah, I'm not sure all the symbols, but like that looks like the R10, um, the disc, the sun disc reaching down. Um, I'm not sure if the artist on this was trying to get a particular... Um, thing across. I'm not sure if like whether these symbols mean anything or whether they're just sort of kind of random. Um, all sides? No, three out of four sides have an art and reaching down. Um, yeah, there's some cartouches on there. Uh, it's a little bit, because they're, they're, you know, they were trying to make them so small, it's a little bit hard to read and my <laughs> hieroglyph reading is not great. Um, but yeah, like, kind of cute. Now, there were so many obelisks. He showed me a few and, like, you know, was going to give me a good deal on basically anything, except for the one that was, like, this little one made out of silver, and I didn't realize it was made out of silver until he brought it out, and I'm like, oh, no, because that one was going to be, like, hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I'm not spending that much on these kinds of things. Um, but yeah, so, like, there were some black ones with, like, white kind of... Uh, similar to this, but like more all black and then um, the white symbols on it, but not as intricate as this. Um, they were sort of like being bigger symbols. And then there was one that had like this extra base with little scarabs around the bottom and it was just so tall and like, how will I fit that in my shelf? So when I saw this one and it's also gold, which will go nicely with my little statues that are gold if I put them together. I haven't decided how to redesign the shelf now that I've got all this extra stuff. But yeah, cool. That was a lot of fun. So now I've got a pyramid and an obelisk. Speaking of hieroglyphs, he also gave me this um, little bookmark. It's also on papyrus. Um, he gave me that for free because <laughs> it's just a small thing, I guess, and he's closing down, so he didn't mind. But yeah, it's got um, the basic alphabet. Uh, there's more in hieroglyphs. I guess it's a bit like, you know, maybe like kanji in Japanese or, um, you know, Chinese characters where a lot of the symbols will mean a word or something. But these are the more sound-based ones. And I used to know, I used to be able to remember a lot of them. I still remember... Um, quite a few of them, but that'll help me freshen up, although I should probably read more books because then I would actually use the bookmark. But yeah, it's kind of cute of him to give me that. Next up, we've got another little thing and some bubble wrap. I think I can just slip it out the end. Um, yeah, another scarab. So this is the scarab that I chose before I found the necklace and, um, yeah, cute. Like, this will go nicely on the shelf. The, um, the, the little necklace pendant thing, um, that won't go on the shelf so well. That's gonna go in my little jewelry thing. Um, but yeah, so this one will sit nicely. And, um, yeah, that's part of this whole objects thing. So pyramid, obelisk, scarab, because I didn't have a proper scarab. I have, like, a cheap scarab necklace in my jewelry thing, but now I've got a proper scarab um, necklace pendant. And you can see, yeah, there were quite a few designs for these guys as well. But this one, like, I like the colour. It's a funny little gold spot there, but, like, this sort of blue-green, the way that it's painted is really cool, and um, the detail on there. Um, some of them were standing up a bit more, so you had a gap underneath, kind of like the pendant has that little gap, but this guy is just, like, one solid bit. And, um, yeah, there's, like, one little chip there, but that's okay. And, um, yeah, I really love the colors on that. And then one of the things that set this apart from the other ones I was looking at is on the bottom. Again, you have all of this kind of stuff. And I know that you wouldn't normally see that when you when it's just sitting on the shelf, but, like, I really appreciate the extra detail. And um, maybe one day I'll be able to read some of that because there are some little characters, but... Uh, yeah, again, really small. When you're trying to do hieroglyphs that small, they get a little bit hard to read and hard to do, um, you know, really neatly. So yeah, cute. And I like that it's got those cool colors on the bottom as well. I was considering a bl bright blue, like light blue kind of one, but this one, yeah, look at him, isn't he cute? So yeah, we've got obelisk pyramid scarab. 
Next up, we've got a statue. Let me open him up. Whoop. Hey, it's a kitty! So this is Bast, or Bastet, she's the cat goddess. Um, not a goddess that I focused on a lot, but because I went in there shopping, I was dressed up as a cat. It's like, how can I live without a cat? I don't really have um, a cat goddess on my on my shelf anyway. Um, I mean, there's Sekhmet, who is the lion, and then there's this little cat statue that my grandma got me, but it's not in the Egy ancient Egyptian style. Um, so yeah, Bastet, it's about time I got one, right? You know, me being all cat-like. Uh, but yeah, so I get to a quick look. Um, I guess we'll start with the face. You can see like the cute little little ear piercing. Oh my gosh. And then yeah, the, the golden features. We've got the, the necklace and the little scarab on the chest. So there's a little eye of Horus there. Um, sort of goes all the way, all the way around. And then um, down here, we have lots of little hieroglyphs and things there. We've also got Egypt in English. And yeah, some cute little detail. Um, now, <clears throat> You may notice there's some little painting issues where the gold has gone onto the black um, and then you're wondering, well, why did I buy it? But so they had a row of full row of um, little cat statues and then there were some others that I found as well. But all of them, they were kind of like stone like or, you know, they didn't have these kinds of features. Some of them had the eyes colored in, but in a different way. And so they just for me, they didn't have any life to it, whereas this actually has life to it, you know, um, and it's a lot cuter than the others. And just the way that the eyes are done, eyes are really important to me because, um, yeah, if you get the eyes wrong, like when I, when I used to draw characters and so on, if I got the eyes wrong, that like, that whole character is dead. I can't, I can't use it. I would either rub it out, throw it out, just scribble it out. Um, yeah. So to get the eyes right, that's why I got this one. And because it's cute and like the earring, the little ear piercing, I think is what caught my eye first. Um, but yeah, so this is my little kitty. It's quite a big one. Um, but yeah, so I, I really like that. And I like the way that it's, you know, sitting and yeah, it's just about time that I got one. So now I have myself a little cat. <laughs> to justify why I turned up. You know, I had my pink fluffy hat and oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, I am a bit of a nut. At home, I'm just here wearing my jumper and my hunt end. But um, yeah, when I go out, sometimes I dress up, especially because it's cold. <laughs> so yeah, this is my Bast or Bastet statue in cat form. And yeah, we'll put that over here. Okay, so the last one, and this is the one that... Um, I'm the most excited about. This is the one that I wasn't sure I would ever be able to find. And when I went into the shop, I actually wasn't sure I'd buy anything um, because my interest in just like everything has dropped off and that includes ancient Egyptian. Um, you know, the anhedonia that I've had has just really messed everything up for me. And I guess the novelty of ancient Egypt kind of wore off and I hadn't been into the shop for a long time. I did visit him a few weeks back just to find out if he was actually closing for real because he's sort of been closing down for ages. But yeah, now that they're redeveloping the building anyway. Anyway, so I went in when I was looking around and I thought, oh yeah, I could get my pyramid or obelisk or scarab. Um, but I wasn't feeling it until I saw this. And when I saw this statue and I'm like, oh my God. And then it's in my price range and he's like offering me a good deal and yeah the sentimentality of it I'm just like wow and that's when all the ancient Egyptian interest like kicked back in so it, all this stuff it is inside me somewhere it's just hasn't been conscious and it's hard to hang on to but so enough of me rambling I don't know if you can see through the bubble wrap let's open him up hey hey that's right, it's set. Um, yeah, Paper Vampire on Patreon guessed this. So on Patreon, they have like a, a stories feature so that you can do, you know, those 24 hour little snapshots of your life um, that's exclusive to your patrons. And yeah, I actually teased this video and said, oh, I found this one that I, I had given up on, thought I was never going to find, can you guess what it is? And so yeah, Paper Vampire got that right. And so yeah, set or Seth, um, depending on, you know, just, I guess, which, which mythology, like, you know, they, the names are all a bit inconsistent. We don't really know how they pronounce them, but yeah, he's basically, um, you know, the equivalent of a Satan figure 
in um, ancient Egypt. Although in the older days before the two kingdoms united, um, I think he was, oh, I don't remember if it was upper or lower Egypt, but he was representative of one of the halves of Egypt. And when that half, the, the, as I understand it, I, I may be misremembering because I didn't go and Google this to make sure before making this video and it's all off the top of my head. But as I understand it, so the two halves of Egypt, there's like the upper kingdom and the lower kingdom and one of them beat the other. And the one that got beaten, as far as I understand, was the one that Seth set was um responsible for and so of course he became the devil because he lost um had it gone the other way he might have replaced i guess horus um and yeah i'm not really sure what kind of animal he's meant to be it's always been a little bit vague looks a bit like an anteater to me you can see he's got this little rope here um and yeah because he's the devil kind of character like i thought no one would make a statue of him um and so when i saw him on the shelf and i'm like this is the last day that this shop is open and i've happened to find the one that i've been waiting to find um that i was just like yeah okay i'm in shopping mode now because i gotta get at least this one and i guess you know the excitement kicks in oh I just notice this tiny little cartouche um i'm not sure how well that's showing up on camera um yeah it's really really small camera's probably not going to be able to focus any closer than this um but yeah i'm not sure if that is um maybe the artist name or you yeah, know it's a bit small for me to read but uh interesting anyway anyway yeah so once i found it you know that part of me that gets excited about ancient egypt that younger part of me i guess kicked in and so i ended up buying all the things some other cool things about this one is like you know he's quite tall and so he might be is he even taller than the cat yeah he's taller than the cat is he taller than the obelisk yeah wow he's taller than the obelisk so he's now my tallest ancient egyptian thing and so um yeah <laughs> i guess that makes him sort of the key figure amongst my little shrine of dudes so cool he's tall but also i notice um he's got his left foot full Forward. and I think that's respect for the pharaoh so even though he's supposed to be like a satan character if you remember like you know in his past he wasn't always demonized as such um you know that to me perhaps sim symbolizes his past I mean I don't know if the artist had a particular thought or if he was always depicted this way um I did see the occasional statue with the right foot forward but I think that's generally considered a mistake I think even Tutankhamun's tomb had one with the right foot forward so I, I don't know maybe there's different reasoning but as as far as I understand, left foot forward is a sign of respect. Um, and before he was demonized, you know, he was the god of storms, I think. Um, again, take with a grain of salt because my memory may not be great. Um, god of storms and he also defended Ra against um, Apep who is like the the sort of snake that swallows the sun during a an eclipse a solar eclipse or and also swallows the sun at the end of the day and then the gods like fight him in the middle of the night to make sure the sun rises the next day so he once defended um, Ra against the the you know big giant snake thing um apep i didn't get a statue or anything of apep um <laughs> apep though like so when i used to write fiction stuff um it was kind of significant to me but i used to use the greek name apophis and uh this goes into a whole bunch of rpg stuff i'm sorry about the sun suddenly like trying to shine on set right here <laughs> that's some awkward timing anyway um yeah I don't know. I sort of considered I could get something with Apep. I mean, I got um, Amit, who I also never really paid much attention to. But yeah, I think with Apep, the way he's depicted in ancient Egypt is more as a snake. Whereas for me, the Apophis character that I used to write was more of a dragon. So yeah, I didn't go and get one of them. I don't even know if there were too many with the snakes. But yeah, so Set. I was never particularly obsessed with him as a devil character, but I do like that he's sort of on that dark side and sort of ambiguous if you consider his past. And that's kind of exciting. And when I was asking the guy just to confirm, like, is this really Set? Like, wow, you've got one of these statues. And he's like, yeah, he's, you know, the devil. We get people asking for him, but we don't really carry many of them. This is the last one and it's mine. So I don't know. I think like maybe subconsciously there's a superstitious part of me that was like, you know, when I found this guy, it was sort of like, wow, like, you know, this is sort of like fate, even though I don't believe that kind of stuff. Um, you know, humans, evolving and becoming tribal and all that um i think we're sort of predisposed to have a bit of superstitious thinking um and because you know like pretty much every early group of humans has had some kind of religious thought to help explain the world uh, maybe helped us 
get through life in those early days when things were dangerous and you're trying to understand and trying to influence the world so that things turn out better. Um, and so there may be like some leftover part of me that was a little bit superstitious and finding the guy that I was looking for had given up on. And then on my very last day, my very last chance to find him, there he is. And so... Yeah, going shopping. I know I'm rambling, but that's what happens when I just make videos unplanned. So anyway, exciting. And now I've got like, I got to find more places to put all this because they're not going to just slot in with my current shelf. I might have to make space for like a second shelf. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I got on my final shopping day on the last day ever of the Sphinx Gallery Cremorn. It's kind of sad to see him go. Um, apparently he's been there for like 40 years, which is longer than I've been alive. And he was always nice to me. And you know, when my grandma used to take me um, way back, um, it's interesting that my grandma used to take me because she was like, you know, really into Catholicism and, you know, this is essentially pagan, but I don't know. I guess like, you know, she used to go and visit, um, Egypt. Like she actually went to Egypt and got me this little necklace from there, um, ages ago. So yeah, there's like some sentimental stuff, both from my own younger self interest in ancient Egypt, but also my grandma, um, you know, taking me there and, you know, I guess indulging the interest. Um, she was into a lot of art stuff and, uh, she used to take me to the art gallery as well. And, you know, she's the one who I think first got me into bonsai. Um, this is my Australian grandma. My Japanese grandma died a very long time ago, so I didn't really know her, but this is my Australian grandma. You know, she used to take me to all this cultural stuff, exhibitions about Japan, but also, um, taking me to the Egyptian shop. So yeah, double sentimental kinds of thing. My own interest, that sort of family connection. So yeah, it's kind of a part of my youth and I guess I've been trying to get back some of that in bits and pieces because um, these days I'm so empty and I don't like being empty. Like it's just, oh, it's so hard to get through life when you're not interested in anything and everything just feels flat. So it's nice to like reconnect a little bit with this old thing, even though, um, you know, these days I'm less into it. Maybe this will help revive some of my interest. Um, Moonlight didn't really help me revive my interest as I guess I was more interested in the split personality aspect of it. But it is kind of funny, like when you bring up ancient Egypt and that part of my brain kicks in again and like that lady who didn't know anything about stuff and suddenly I'm helping explain, oh yeah, this is this and here's the story behind that. And um, she asked me some advice on like, she wanted to buy some canopic jars and she asked me like which color should she get I'm like I don't know but <laughs> here's an opinion anyway so that was yeah it was kind of fun um you know talking to someone who knows a similar level of stuff I mean obviously he knows more than me I think that's all I've got to say I think if I keep talking I'm gonna get more and more repetitive and more and more confused about what I'm even going on about um yeah I'm not a real YouTuber so <laughs> I don't plan these things at all anyway um but yeah I've got to find some space on the shelf maybe eventually I'll show you that because right now I don't know where to put them I'll probably just put them back in the box like really gently and then um I've got to do some dusting because that shelf um the the, the current Egyptian shelf has gotten dust again that's the main one that I keep clean I guess like I'm not spiritual but it feels disrespectful in some kind of way if I don't occasionally clean that space um I've got a Pokemon shelf as well which I haven't shown you guys properly and that is super dusty and I just don't touch it because I don't care and there's nothing in it um and then I've got like a, a miscellaneous shelf and I haven't dusted that in ages. I did dust my dragon shelf. I also made a video about my dragon shelf a while ago. Um, but yeah, it's mainly the ancient Egypt one. And I don't know, there is that kind of weird respect for what's going on there. Um, I guess there is a part of me that maybe respects some parts of culture, regardless of me believing it. Um, like it's, including with Japanese stuff, I've got to go back to Japan at some point and help clean up the grave site, which would have been my responsibility had mum stayed in Japan. And then I would have been the oldest kid and the, yeah, that would have been passed on to me. So when they clean that up, um, I've got to go back. And I guess that's, is it because it's related to death or do I have some kind of traditional part of me? Like when I was growing up Catholic, I know I am rambling. I told myself I wouldn't ramble, but here I am. 
um, when I was growing up Catholic and before I stopped believing that stuff, like I wanted to be a priest. Like, I guess I just, I didn't realize I couldn't be a priest, but <laughs> I like learned all the things I learned, like, you know, all the lines that the priest said just from watching him. Cause we went every Sunday. Um, and so maybe there's a part of me that is into the ritual of it, some kind of aspect, some subconscious aspect of the spirituality, even though I'm like a dead atheist these days. So yeah, it's interesting with the ancient Egyptian stuff. I gotta say, when they dig up new mummies and so on and put them on display, sometimes I'm a little bit like, I'm not sure that this is right because they buried them to preserve them in this particular way. And you're not like, you know, that's supposed to be how they get to the underworld. It wasn't really, they didn't bury these people to be on display. Um, it's just like, you know, a few thousand years pass and suddenly we're like, great, look, now it's history. So it does make me think like for those of us who get buried now, will we one day be dug up and put on display in someone else's museum when we just think we're burying the dead respectfully and all that kind of stuff? Um, it's just an interesting thing to think about, like, because it's ancient Egypt you know, we don't think about them as the dead in that way. Although um, in Egypt, the way that they've built the new, um, the new museums, um, there's like the Grand Museum, I think, where they've moved to Tutankhamun and all that. They're actually trying to do it more respectfully and like they've had those crazy parades moving them between places. And I thought, wow, okay, so they are kind of trying to be respectful um, <laughs> for tourism dollars, but they're still um, making an effort there. It's just, yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about, I guess. Anyway, yeah, I did ramble up and, you know, I'm talking about all this respect for the dead stuff. But when it comes to me, when I die, I don't really want anyone to spend any money because like, I'll be dead. I don't care. If you want to throw a party, if you want to use my death as an excuse to throw a party, go for it. But as far as what I want, I'll be dead. I, I don't mind. You can just like, I mean, it's not legal to toss me in the bin, but you could do that. Um, maybe just cremate me and be done with it. Don't spend heaps of money on burials, spaces, or whatever. Um, the funeral industry, I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't need any of that. Um, I don't care. But if you want to throw a metal concert, you can. Just like, you know, don't, I don't want anyone to pretend that that's what I wanted. It, the funerals and stuff are for the people who are still alive. <laughs> you know, the person who's dead is dead. They don't care. Um, so yeah, I just don't want anyone to say that kind of stuff. I don't want anyone to say, oh, she loved life and all that because I don't. Um, yeah, try not to say that kind of stuff. I hate the word veil as well. Veil someone just, please, no, don't, don't say that for me. Um, anyway, I didn't mean to go onto a death ramble, but ancient Egyptian mythology is very much mixed up in death. So I think that's one of the reasons I like it as opposed to other mythologies, you know. The ancient Egyptians were so obsessed with death, like that's a huge part of everything. Their biggest symbols are all about death and um, yeah, me being kind of morbid, um, frequently depressed and all that, maybe that's why it spoke to me. And um, you know, the reason Anubis was one of my favourites is because he's like the guide of the dead and I'm already dead and so <laughs> dead inside anyway. And also he's a jackal, which is almost like a dog. Anyway, but now I've got this guy, um, a, I just never expected to find him and I guess that's why he's now my main sort of dude. Uh, yeah, but I think, I think really Anubis is probably still my main guy, uh, and then Set, uh, just like, I couldn't believe that I found him and, um, yeah, kind of a fun character. I don't know, maybe I need to rethink where I'm at with how I feel about different ancient Egyptian gods. Um, it's just been so long since I thought anything about it, apart from the Moon Knight stuff, where they <laughs> take some, uh, you know, uh, creative liberties, but of course, you know, it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. Anyway, yes, I, as I said, I will get repetitive and I will get confused about what I'm talking about. And that's the point that we've reached, so I'm going to stop before I hurt myself and, um, I'll see you whenever. I'll tr maybe I'll try to live stream sometime. Oh, and I might do a video of like when I finally do get them onto a shelf so I can show you what that's all about. Um, in the meantime, uh, I guess I'll put some videos and stuff up there that you might want to watch and you can join my Patreon if you want to support me extra and like subscribe and stuff if you want me being a nutcase. Mm, let's see. See you later, guys.